G'day and welcome all. It's Tom from New Parenting Hangout. Once again, I've got uh, Tammy Halliday from Mothering the Mother joining us tonight. Tonight we're talking about placenta encapsulation, uh, quite an exciting topic and we've got lots of questions to ask from the feedback from our community. Um, so Tammy, uh, how are you tonight? Where are you hanging out from? Hi Tom, I'm well. I'm hanging out from Melbourne, Australia. Perfect. So uh, as most of you should know by now, so New Parenting Hangout is a, web, a website for new parents uh, and we're delivering information to parents for um, to help educate themselves and make informed decisions uh, about choices during their pregnancy, birth and uh, for parenting. Um, so Tammy, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and where you fit into the whole birthing field itself? So I'm a mother of five. Um, I have, have been working with women giving birth for the last nearly 18 years now. Um, I've been working in the role of a doula, which is a childbirth assistant. So just providing information and support to birthing couples and, and accompanying them on the day that they give birth and a bit of postnatal support as well. And I'm currently teaching the doula training for the Australian Doula College here in Victoria. Okay, perfect. And how long have you been doing all of this for, Tammy? Nearly 18 years. Okay, perfect. So you have a wealth of knowledge stored in, in your head there, eh? You would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. So I'm going to get into it. As I said just before, we've got lots of questions to get through. Um, so the first one that's probably really important and key um, to what placenta encapsulation is, is the placenta itself. But before I jump into that, I'm just going to um, quickly share a disclaimer here um, for today. So um, please note, Mothering the Mothers encapsulation services have not been evaluated by the TJ and are not meant to prevent, treat or diagnose any disease, illness or symptoms. Clients understand that they are assuming all risks and benefits based on their own research. So moving on from there, Tammy, can you tell us a little bit about what is a placenta? Okay, so a placenta is the only disposable organ a mother will ever make or a person will ever make in her lifetime and it is a disc-shaped organ that um, is embedded into the wall of her uterus and its job is to filter out toxins and to um, bring the oxygen and nutrients from the mother's body to the baby and to take the waste products from the baby back through the mum so the mum can dispose of it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so then moving on from that, what is placenta encapsulation? So placenta encapsulation is when we take that placenta after the baby is born and we turn it into a form of medication that a mother can then consume after the birth. Okay, perfect. And, and what are some of the benefits of using the placenta in this way? The, the, the most obvious benefits that we see in the reports that we get back from mothers, Tom, is that they get a significant boost in their energy levels. Um, we know that it can help replenish iron stores in a mum because quite often you lose a bit of blood when you're having a baby. Um, we know that it, can, it, it appears from the studies that have been done that it, it improves breast milk production. Um, it, we know that it seems to have significant effects on postnatal depression, reducing the symptoms of that. Um, just, yeah, lots of stuff. It's got, um, it's got products, it pro, it's got um, substances in it that actually help with pain relief after the birth. It's full of hormones, especially oxytocin, which we know is a mood elevator, but it also helps a mother's uterus come back down to um, pre-baby size as well and it helps to um, reduce that bleeding quickly after the birth. So lots and lots, there's lots and lots of benefits. It sounds like there's a lot of positive uh, attributes to the, using the placenta. So have there been any recent studies, scientific studies of the benefits? Yeah, there's, there's a few things that are going on at the moment. Um, one of the latest ones that I just read 
um, is how it is being used not not an encapsulated placenta this is actually placenta injections that are being given to women who are in menopause to help um, reduce fatigue um, and it it was originally to the experiment was to see if it reduced heart disease in these um, menopausal women but they found it didn't significantly change the heart disease but it did give them more energy and it did um, elevate mood in these elderly women so that's the most recent study I've read. Most of the old other studies are quite old though. Okay, fantastic. And do you have any feedback from any of your clients relating to this? Yeah, I've got one here um, that I can read to you. This is um, from a lady we will call TF and she said um, that she first heard about it from a girlfriend and she was a little bit unsure about it but when she got the capsules, um, she really feels that it's changed her post-birth experience because she believes it ge has given her more energy and positivity throughout her whole experience. And she, the, side, the only side effect that she noticed was a huge boost of energy a few hours after taking the capsules. If feeling down, I would take a capsule and within 24 hours I had a big turnaround with positive energy. And yeah, so she was, she was really happy with it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I just want to know a little bit more about the process then. So are there more than one way to prepare the placenta for consumption? Yeah, there's three main ways um, that I prepare it. Um, one of them is the traditional Chinese method. Another way is to do it what we call the raw method. And the other way is to make a homeopathic remedy out of it. That's the three ways that I offer. Okay, so with the uh, raw method, how is that processed? So with the raw method, um, the placenta is cleaned and then it's sliced up really thinly and put into a dehydrator to dry. And once it's dried to a point that it's brittle, um, it's ground up um, and put into a powder and it's um, put into gel capsules. Okay, perfect. And then with the Chinese medicine is that slightly different than the raw? Yeah, the Chinese medicine actually has an extra step in it and this is the um, warming step. So after it's cleaned, um, it's put into a steamer and it's steamed for about 15 to 20 minutes depending on the size and then it's sliced up and dehydrated. And that warming step is really important in Chinese medicine because it changes it into a yang form which is a warming form which in Chinese medicine, all the, the medicines they gave to mothers post-birth was to raise their body temperature and keep them warm because that had significant benefits to their not only their immediate health but their long-term health as well. Okay, perfect. So, and the other one you touched on was a homeopathic tincture. Um, what is that and how is it processed as well, Tammy? So the homeopathic tincture is made with a, just a small piece of the placenta and I actually like to use the, the cord as well um, and it, it is put into brandy and it's left to sit in brandy for about six weeks and then it's succussed down and turned into a remedy and that, that remedy is really beneficial. It's, that, actually, that remedy can actually be used for the baby as well because the capsules are for the mum but that can be used for the baby as well and it's very similar to a rescue remedy for those um, of your viewers that may use a rescue remedy which you can buy from the chemist and it's very similar to that but it's specifically designed to that baby. Okay, perfect. And is it possible to uh, have all three processes done from the one placenta? Yeah, I've actually had a few people that wanted half of it done raw, half of it done Chinese and also have a homeopathic remedy and that's mm -hmm. certainly um, able to be done. Um, yeah, you just generally find that most people want it one way or the other though or, or to have like the traditional Chinese method and a homeopathic remedy, not the two different types of encapsulation put in there. But you certainly can do all three. Okay, perfect. And I've heard that the placenta can be used in a smoothie. Uh, is that true? Yes, it's actually been a very popular form for a long time before encapsulation became better um, known. Yeah, you take a piece of the placenta and you put it in the blender with whatever your chosen fruit and yogurt or whatever and yes, you consume it that way, little bits at a time. And yeah. Okay, so 
I guess from that, how do you know if you have a healthy placenta? Well, generally your midwife um, or your doctor is going to see when the baby is born that it is it is healthy. There would be uh, it would be unusual to suspect that a, a placenta wasn't healthy if you've had a normal healthy um, labour and birth, or even if you've had a, a cesarean. The the it's it, you are able to see by looking at it, and you're also able to see by the smell. Okay, perfect. So, can all placentas be used? Um, for example, if a mother has a disease or an STD, can the placenta still be used? Um, potentially it can be used, but personally I wouldn't process it on my equipment just for future clients' um, safety sake and for my own oh and protocols that I have in place. But they could certainly do it for themselves at home um, and I would be happy and most encapsulators would be happy to talk them through that so they could do it themselves. Okay, perfect. That sounds great. Um, so does the size of the placenta matter um, for this process? No, not at all. Um, the only thing that would happen, the, the only difference with the size is that you get more or less capsules. That's the only difference that that makes. Okay. Um, so does the birth time of the baby affect the placenta? So the length so of time you... it takes to, to, to birth the baby? All oh, right. Um, no, no, not at all. The the placenta is a living, functioning organ until well after the baby is born. So you know that while while that baby is well and the mum is well, you can guarantee the placenta is well too. Okay. So moving on from that, then uh, the time that it takes to clamp the cord uh, does that affect the placenta? Oh yeah. I mean, not not as in does it affect the placenta, can we encapsulate it or not, mm -hmm. um, but definitely you can see if a cord has had been delayed in clamping, you can see there is much less blood in it than if they have clamped the cord early. And yeah, it's, you can see it, but both can be encapsulated. Okay, so can the placenta be used if the mother has had an infection? Um, so if she's got an infection during the labour? Yes. Okay, so what you would normally expect is if a mum has got an infection during the labour, they would have given her um, antibiotics during the labour to manage that anyway. If she has for some reason refused antibiotics, um, it would be highly likely that she wouldn't be able to keep the placenta because it would probably be sent off to pathology anyway. So. Yeah. Okay, so if she has had the antibiotics, can she use the placenta? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay. yep. And what happens if the, the mother um, gives birth via caesarean? Can the placenta still be used then? Absolutely, yep. It's just, there's no difference at all. It's just, it just gets delivered to her straight away. Okay. All right, so. Um, I know that I'm, there's, there's lots of questions that are kind of similar here, but they're really important questions for people that have asked, and it's important to, to ask the right questions so we answer people's questions. Um, so if the mother has been induced, can the placenta still be used? Yeah, the, the mother being induced means that she's going to have synthetic oxytocin in her system, um, and it probably means there will be slightly less natural oxytocin in the placenta, but the it it's still it's still going to have so many benefits for her to to consume that rather than not just have it. I would never not just have my placenta encapsulated because I'd been induced. Okay, and so can the placenta be used if the mother has um, had drugs during the labour or has had an, an epidural or a general anaesthetic? Yeah, absolutely. The placenta is a filter. So those, all of those drugs are going to cross the placenta and get to the baby and then flow back through, but it's not going to be stored there. So mm -hmm. once again, same answer. It, there, would, there are so many benefits. If, if she's had medical interventions, she's probably going to need the benefits of her placenta after the birth even more. Okay. So if the baby's born prematurely, um, is there a can one can the placenta be used, and two is there a kind of cut off period um, where the placenta may not be used? Um, as far as prematurity is concerned, 
you can absolutely use the placenta. That that conversation needs to be had with your um, with your care providers. As long as the doctors will actually give it to you or the midwife will give it to you, we can use it. You, often though, when a baby is prem, they want to send that placenta off to pathology to try and find out why the baby was prem. But there's still ways to get around that. I don't know if you want me to answer that now. There's still ways to get around that if you're interested in doing it. Yep, that'd be great if you could answer that. Okay, so so one of the things that you can actually ask, if you tell your um, care provider that you really, really want to take the placenta, they can take a part of the placenta and maybe a part of the cord and send that off to pathology and you get to keep the rest of it. And if you're really passionate about it and it's really important to you, unless there's a really big problem that they can see with the placenta, they would usually let you do that. Okay, perfect. So can the placenta be used if the mother has had a lotus birth? Yeah. Well, I've heard of people that have sort of come up with really ingenious ways to to make that be able to happen. My personal um, protocol with it is that I don't encapsulate placentas that have um, been with a lotus birth just because of the length of time that placenta is exposed to the air and is unrefrigerated. Because um, I've got fairly strict protocols and procedures that I work with in my business, as you know. So. There, there are ways to do it if you are really, really passionate about doing it and you would need to speak to whoever was going to encapsulate your placenta. But the other thing is is that usually um, a lot of salt is put on lotus um, placentas mm -hmm. and that alone is not very good then for a mum to consume. So you, yeah. there, you would have to do it a very specific way if you wanted to do lotus birth and encapsulation. Yeah. The salt's used to dry out the placenta, yes? Yeah, it's to it's a type of preserving a way that they preserve it. So you know, like a, a you know, like a, a midway that you can do is allow the placenta to stay attached to the baby for a few hours, like for a good you know three or four hours. Even that's perfectly within the parameters that we would it'd be ha I'd be happy to do it with and that are yeah. safe. Um, and then cut the cord so you know for starters that you've got the baby's got all the placental transfusion and also you know, you've, you've had a chance for that baby to stay connected to the placenta for a longer period of time. Okay. So if the mother's planning on a home birth, can she still use her placenta? Absolutely. Once again, you would need to speak to your midwife and let her know that that's what you were going to do. But I've found home birth midwives are very supportive of placenta encapsulation. Okay. And I've heard that um, some mothers have frozen their placenta after the birth of their child. Um, is it possible to have the placenta encapsulated later on? Yeah, you know, placentas, as horrible as this sounds, placentas are really just another piece of meat. So we, we see nothing wrong with freezing meat and then eating it later on. The difference, obviously, with placenta encapsulation is that we've got a really fine balance of hormones and um, nutrients going on in there that we want to get at their optimum potency. Mm -hmm. So if it's, it's much, much better to do it fresh. Um, but if it is frozen, obviously, you're still going to get significant nutrients and significant benefits out of encapsulating it if it's been frozen. So I would say, you know, three to six months is like still well within the window of what's pretty normal and okay. Although I have to say I have done one that was older because the mum really, 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 she'd had it frozen and she really, really, really wanted it encapsulated. And she said she had really good results from it. So who knows? So I'm assuming that it needs to be frozen straight away. You couldn't have it in the fridge for a week and then put it in the freezer. No. If you're going to freeze it, it needs to go, like you said, within a few hours it needs to go straight into the freezer. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've covered a home birth. So a lot of home births are water births. Um, so can you use a placenta if it's been delivered um, into a water pool? Mm. You know, the baby a baby is born through the most bacteria-rich part of a mother's body around her perineum, there's so much bacteria there and it's all part of the normal process of birth. Mm -hmm. Coming out into a birth pool, the bacteria is not any more concentrated. Actually, it's probably diluted. So it's still fine to have a 
birth that a baby that's born in water or a placenta that's born in water encapsulated many many women though who have a water birth will actually get out of the pool to birth their placenta and I would say it's probably the ideal okay so this isn't for everyone this question but uh, in the case of twins can the placenta be used um, or if there is is there two placentas that uh, are they both used oh yes and I love twins and I've got a special on at the moment for twin placentas I don't know if you saw that on my Facebook page I think that's fantastic and I think parents who have twins really need both their placentas encapsulated um, the, both the placentas would be encapsulated and if you're going to make a homeopathic remedy we would make a homeopathic remedy specific to the twin that, their, that came from their placenta if they had separate placentas so if you can identify which placenta belongs to which twin it's ideal to for, for doing that up but absolutely we would do both placentas and we would use them for mum okay perfect so if a mother's given birth at a hospital can she have the placenta processed yes if you tell your care provider and I would suggest that you put it in your birth plan if you're having it at a hospital um, so that it, you make sure that your placenta stays in the room with you and it's looked after properly um, yeah but but most hospitals are very happy to allow you to take your placenta and do with it whatever you want Okay, so that, that was the next question I was going to ask you will the hospital allow you to take the placenta to be processed and you touched on it before as well um, so the answer is yes to that Although some hospitals will ask that you sign a disclaimer, um, or you have to sign a release form to take it, but most hospitals don't care about that. They're quite happy for you to take it. Okay, and you also touched on this question. So what if, what if they want to take the placenta to pathology? Um, if they want to take it to pathology and you can't negotiate to have it, keep it in the room, unfortunately, um, I don't deem, that, deem those placentas safe to process just because you don't know where it's been kept is unlikely that it would have been refrigerated it would pr it would be absolutely cross-contaminated without any doubt at all um, so once it's once it's gone to pathology I won't process it and most most ethical um, encapsulators won't do a placenta that's gone to pathology mm -hmm. so what is the proper placenta care and handling for encapsulation um, just tell me what you mean by that. So what would be the, the, like one of the things that you just said to me would be to make sure that the placenta doesn't get, uh, leave your site basically so you can, you know um, where the placenta has been through the process. So Yeah, so, so one of the things that you would, um, that you would do is um, you would make sure that the placenta is cared for, that you have got it in your room and that you get it um, into a chilled environment as quickly as possible. So most hospitals have a um, have a bar? fridge in the room. Yep. So you'd pop pop it in the fridge in an esky or an ice cream container. A lot of hospitals have a little bucket with a little you know sealable lid, like a little ice cream bucket that you can put in. Um, yeah. So as yeah, just keep, get it chilled as quickly as possible. Okay. So to the best of your knowledge, is this acceptable in all cultures and religions? Um, there are a few cultures that are not okay with it um, because of the blood that is in it um, that, you know, it wouldn't be okay for them even though other people feel that it's okay because it's like meat. Any meat that's been bled, it's fine to eat. Um, it, there are some cultures who feel that it is cannibalism um, there are other cultures that believe that the soul of the baby is in the placenta and that it would be, um, you know, disrespectful to eat that. So there's, there's different, there are different cultural beliefs and, and everyone's got to honour and they've got to do what feels right for them. So this isn't for everyone? <laughs> no. Does that surprise you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you just said uh, about it being a, like meat. Um, so if the mother's vegetarian, can she consume the capsules? You know, I think I, the, some of the most glowing testimonials I get back from this is from vegetarians. Um, 
many vegetarians are very comfortable taking their um, placenta in capsules because it's not made from a another animal it's their own it's their own flesh um, and it's their so they are they're very comfortable with it and it's putting back into them what they've already given out okay perfect so we touched on care of the placenta um, and I guess the the next kind of obvious step is the transportation of the the uh, placenta so do you come and pick up the placenta after the delivery um, I can, I can do, I, I don't generally offer that service any, any more time just because it's difficult to have pass those costs on to clients um, and keep the, the cost like low. So generally I encourage people to get all the family and friends around that are wanting to know what can we do, what can we do to say cool, can you drop this off for me. Okay, perfect. Um, so in most cases, the father will want to spend time with the partner and the newborn directly after the birth. Do they, do they need to drop off the placenta immediately? No, it can stay at room temperature for like four hours plus. Um, and then it can be refrigerated for up to 48 hours very safely. So, yeah. you know, if it goes straight in the fridge, that's that's like a couple of days before you need to drop it off. Um and usually, because cause I'm right here in Melbourne and because most like, I mean, you've obviously got a global audience watching this. So, you know, most people are going to find that their encapsulator is within an easy drive or they'll, you know, it's not hard to get to them. They should okay. be able to do it in that time frame. So how should the placenta be transported? So ideally it comes out of the fridge into an esky with some ice bricks or some ice packed around it. So we want to keep it chilled. We want to keep it chilled as much as possible just because it gives everybody peace of mind. Okay. Uh, so is there a time restriction after the birth um, for you to be able to process the placenta? I, My personal protocols and procedures is I need to have that placenta within 48 hours and that in the meantime, it needs to have been cared for properly. So, you know, you know, we get those long hot summers in Australia here. You know, if it's been sitting in the backseat of someone's car on a 42 degree day for two days, it's, it, you know, we've lost our entire window of opportunity. It needs to be cared for properly, but within that 40 to 48 hours, everything's usually fine. Okay. So, um, what information is required about the birth of the placenta um, when it's delivered or picked up? from you? So I usually want to know was it um, a vaginal birth or was it a caesarean? I usually want to know the time the placenta was um, born. Um, I want to know how it was stored and what times that was stored. So what time it went into the fridge, what time it went into the car, how it was packed and all that sort of stuff. That, that for me that's important to know. Okay, so is it okay for a friend or a family member to drop off the placenta to you? Yeah, it usually is a friend or a family member and as long as they've got that information or if they don't, I can ring mum. I usually have mum's mobile number anyway, so I'll ring her and I'll find that out before I start. Okay, so I guess we've now um, delivered the placenta to you or you, you picked the placenta up. Um, I guess that one of the things that we want to know is uh, how do we know uh, it's being processed in, a hyg in hygienic conditions? Um, for example, how's your working environment cleaned afterwards? Okay, so I have, and I can only speak personally here because everyone's going to have different a different environment that they encapsulate in. I have a little studio that's set up. It's got. Um, a sink and a bench that's and, and equipment that is dedicated just for this. Um, it is very clean it's, and it's, it's easy to clean as well. Um, it's got lots of light so I can see what I'm doing. The, the um, products that I use to clean my equipment is the same as they use in a theatre in a hospital. So it's all used for surgical equipment and um, yeah, okay, top perfect. notch. Perfect. So have you had your site evaluated from in, anyone independently? Yes, I actually had a microbiologist come out and check out my 
my encapsulation area and all my working equipment and all my standards. She went through my procedures and protocols and checked it all out. Um, yeah, I did, and I got I got special plumbing done, and I yeah, I've set it up properly, and and she gave it a really big tick. Actually, she said I was going a bit over the top with some of the stuff, and she was able to pull back some of my procedures, which was nice. But yeah, it's it made me feel really good to know that that it was like meeting that standard. Okay, perfect. So, what type of supplies um, do you use, and how are they sterilized? So. I've got um, t a few pieces of equipment. I've got uh, my knives and my cutting board. I've got a a um, little steamer that I use, and I've got an, a dehydrator. So the cutting boards that I use are disposable, so they get used once and then thrown out. Um, and all the rest of it is cleaned, like I said, in that surgical cleanup equipment and then it's sprayed with a disinfectant once again that kills HIV and Hep B and all the nasties and then it's all rinsed off and put away and it's in top notch condition. Okay, perfect. All right, so from that you've now processed the, uh, the placenta. Um, I guess it's kind of the delivery method from, from your workshop um, to the client again. Um, so how can you be sure that it's your placenta that you're getting back? Well, I have got a whole lot of procedures and protocols in place to make sure that they would never get mixed up. But probably the most biggest procedure I have in place is that I only ever process one placenta at a time. So that's sort of, that's my big gun. And then Everything is so carefully labelled as I'm working on it. Even if I did have a couple, it would be impossible to get them mixed up. But I, I don't ever have two going at a time. I just think it's, besides everything else, I just think it's disrespectful because it's not a conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So on, on average, how many capsules does a placenta normally yield? Everyone asks this question, and this is like asking, "How long will my labour be?" Um, it it depends on the <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the size of the placenta. Like I've had placentas that I got 120 capsules out of. I've had another placenta I got 270. Okay, so well, that's a lot. Well, yeah, like yeah. so, you know, uh, mind you, the placenta that yielded 270 had a baby that was 10 pound ish. You know, and the other one was from a premie. Yep. So, so Kate's just asking me in the background how long her labour is going to be. Um, do you have any answers to that? Um, show me the palm of your hand, Kate. I'll read your palm and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I would make a million if I could do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, is the placenta products shipped afterwards, or does it have to be picked up by us? You can pick it up if you want and actually I think it's a really good idea because I had a very unfortunate Australia Post incident earlier this year and I sent, because I normally post um, the, the products back by registered mail um, and now I send it back by registered mail with insurance. So yeah, you know, you, I, I send it back at the highest quality mail and security I can. But I think for absolute safety, someone physically coming and taking it out of my hands is my ideal. Okay, so yeah, that's some, something out of your control that Australia Post did affected the, the delivery. Um, so it's, it's good to see that you've adjusted to, to, um, to that. Um, so how long will it generally take to receive the capsules if it's done um, through Australia Post? I aim to get it back to people within 72 hours of having it delivered to me. So that gives me about 24 hours to get the um, placenta encapsulated and it gives another 24 hours like overnight delivery to get it back to them and it, you know, yeah, so usually within 72 hours. Obviously if you have your baby on a Thursday, the weekend mucks that up um, mm -hmm. but yeah. 
Okay, so if I was to get the tincture done before you said it takes about six weeks for the process, how long before I'd receive the tincture? Yeah, so it's about six weeks because it takes me like a little, like an afternoon to do the process, um, but then it, it gets mailed back to you and you have it the next day hopefully. So it, it takes about six weeks. You should have it within about six weeks. Okay, so... Um, now that I've got the product in my hot little hands, um, how should the capsules be stored and the tincture be stored? Okay, so the you know you can store the capsules in just a cool dark cupboard. My my own recommendation is that you put it in the fridge because you know you want it to remain maintain its potency. And it, it's been a living product, you know. Like it, this is this is a really precious thing. So the more potent we can keep it for, the longer the better. And especially because of, and we'll talk about this in a minute. Because of the way I tell you to take it. So my ideal is that you put it in the fridge um, or even in the freezer. But a cool dark cupboard is not bad. If you're tra travelling or something like that, they don't have to be refrigerated. Okay. So do the capsules have an expiration date? No, not really. No, not really. That I mean, I, I think that they're going to have their most potency in the first couple of years, mm -hmm. but they're not going to go off. Yeah. So now that I have the product, um, when should I start using it? Straight away. <laughs> um, the we usually I usually suggest that um, Mum takes one in the morning with breakfast. And one at lunchtime. Okay. So, and um, what time period should a mother use the capsules for? As so, what length of time? Can I just go back to that last question? Is um, we don't suggest that you take these after three o'clock in the afternoon, because mm. mums that are sensitive to it, it will interrupt their sleep because they really are an upper. People call it nature's ecstasy because it gives you such a buzz. So the last thing you want to do is be sleep deprived when you have a new baby. So, which you're already going to probably be sleep deprived. So this is this you don't want to take something that's going to um, disturb your sleep. Um, how long you should take it for is t we generally recommend that you take it for about the first six weeks. See how you're feeling. If you're feeling really good and on top of everything, put the rest of them in the fridge or the freezer and leave them until you need them. Mm -hmm. So. If you start to, if you get, un, if you become unwell, or the baby's unwell, and you've had like a lot of restless nights or something, you can start taking them again to give yourself a bit more of a boost again. Okay. So, is there any time that a mother should not use the capsules? Yeah, you know, I've been asked that by a few people. I, you know, I, there are times when women have mastitis or they've got. Um, too much milk and things like that and because these are designed to increase milk supply and things you know you're probably better to to wind back on it a little bit um, other than that no these are these capsules are fantastic okay so will the capsules affect the baby some mums say that the baby gets a bit of a boost from it I don't know I think obviously the baby's going to get the benefits of mum feeling better and mum like mum's mood feeling better and mum having more energy, the baby's going to get those effects. And everything that you take goes through your breast milk. So some of this is going to filter through, but it's not a foreign substance that you're taking. This is a communication. Your baby's been in communication with your body and your placenta from the womb. So it's not certainly not going to hurt your baby. Okay, so just to clarify, um, then taking the, the capsules um, is going to, there's a high chance it's going to increase your breast milk production. Yeah, one of the, the significant studies, even though it's fairly old, one of the few significant studies about placenta encapsulation actually showed that it significantly increased and noticeably increased mother's milk supply. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, if you've got the capsule and you've also got the tincture as well, how is the tincture used for the mum and how is it used for the baby? So the tincture is used like a rescue remedy and a rescue remedy is for anxiety and, you know, stress. Mm -hmm. This is a tincture that is used for transition. 
So any time that you're going through any sort of stress related to change, so if mum's starting a new job or there's things going on in the house like people coming or leaving or anxieties or you've got a big party or something and you're feeling anxious for like organising it, this is a great time to take this remedy. And it's the same for the baby. You know, if the baby, if the little one is getting teeth or um, dad's away with work or they've got to start childcare or there's, or there's any sort of shift in their environment, this is a really great um, um, tincture to use for that. Okay, so how is it physically um, taken? So it's it's um it's little drops. So it's little drops of it would taste like brandy. Um, <laughs> so mum mum takes a few drops under her tongue. With babies, it's a bit strong, so we'd put it in some breast milk. So two or three drops in a teaspoon of breast milk. Okay, perfect. So it's orally taken then. Yep. Yep. Perfect. And how Can long? I just Oh. Sorry, can I, can I just go back to one thing about the capsules? The capsules affect the baby by through the breast milk. The capsules are not a baby dose. The, the capsules are not designed to give to babies. I had one mum who broke it up and she, who separated the capsule and sprinkled it on her 12-month-old um, baby food breakfast and she rang me and she said, he has been awake for 18 hours straight. Like it was just like this. So... Mm -hmm. Like there, it, it's an adult dose and it's an adult medicine. It's not designed for a baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a very, very uh, good point there. Um, so, how long would the tincture last for then, Tammy? Um, the tincture will last for your baby's entire lifetime because the the whole point with the tincture is that you get two bottles when you get the tincture. You get the mother tincture and then you get the usable one. The usable one is the one that you have drops of. The mother tincture is a stronger dose which you then are going to dilute down to use. So mm -hmm. each time you want to dilute it down, you're only going to take one mil out of the hundred mil that I give you to make another whole bottle, so which okay. is like which is huge. So yeah. you, I can't see how you would ever run out of that tincture. Okay, perfect. Um, mm. So how far, how how diluted is it then? So one mil you add it to do you add it to water do you add it to brandy do you so I add it to brandy there are other ways of doing it um, I add it to brandy the um, it is diluted down and and the thing with homeopathics is the more diluted you make it the more potent it becomes so um, I, I use an example there is a, a homeopathic remedy that I use when I am working with women in labor called colophyllum I get that and it's eight times diluted. Midwives can get it by prescription and it's 200 times diluted, but it is very, it's a very strong dose and it, it does very, it makes a very big change in the way mum's bodies work. That's why only midwives are allowed to have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so the more diluted it is, the stronger it gets. You can make this, this um, tincture as strong as you want by diluting it down more and more and more or you can ask me to do it and I will do it to the strength that you ask. So, okay. so but generally the tincture that I provide is 22 times down. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, okay, so the next steps then I guess is uh, do I need to pay in advance to, to get this service? Um, no, not necessarily. You can pay on the day you deliver the placenta. I have a um, policy though where I tend to keep. I pay per. I I do per the <laughs> first paid, first served. So if two people have their baby on the same day and one has paid, the second person I'll still do their placenta, but they need to keep theirs home in their fridge until I'm ready to do it. <laughs> So that's okay. the only difference that it makes. So do I need to organise this in advance then, Tammy? Um... It's a good idea too. If you all, look, if you organise it and pay for it in advance, if anything happens and for some reason you can't use the placenta, I just do a full refund. There's no penalty for it. It's just it's one of the reasons that I get people to pay in advance is that it's another thing that they don't have to think about on the day the baby's born because it's already done. 
They've not got someone running around trying to get cash out or do bank transfers. It's all, all already organised. But it really is up to you. Okay. So um, have you got any other, uh, any other feedback from clients that you'd like to share with everyone? Sure. Um, I've got another one from a, um, a lovely girl. I'm just going to see if she'll let me use her name. Um, yes, she wants me to use her initials, K. Kay says, I really love my placenta capsules as such a challenging time, getting used to my new life as a mother and caring 24-7 for my little one. The stress and exhaustion could have gotten on top of me if I didn't have the capsules. I felt they really boosted my energy and kept me in a happy and calm state even during challenging times with my baby and my husband. A few times I forgot to take the capsules and as soon as the next day, I noticed a shift in my mood to being more down and feeling like I couldn't cope as well as feeling more tired. So I once again took the capsules and my whole mood and feeling shifted. They really had amazing positive effects for me. Um, I would recommend and have recommended this to any mother to help support her and her baby. Okay, perfect. That's a, a pretty glowing review there, Tammy. Hmm. This is really like this is what I'm I'm seeing time and time again though Tom the feedback is just so positive. Okay, that's fantastic. So Tammy, what qualifications do you have in relation to this? Um I have I've got a few the qualifications I have is that I've learned how to do it and I've been doing it for a while and I was taught by someone who'd been doing it for a long time. That's how I learned how to do it. But my actual, my actual certificates on the wall sort of qualifications are, I'm sorry, I'll just turn that phone off, are I have a Cert 4 in oh and S infection control. I've got a Cert 4 in doula services. I've got a Level 3 oh and S first aid certificate. I've also got a certificate 2 in food handling. That's okay. really annoying, isn't it? Uh, that's okay. Um, although they sound pretty impressive, the, the qualifications there, um, I'd certainly feel comfortable um, with this process. So how do people get in touch with you then, Tammy? Um, here, Mothering the Mother. I have got, I'm, you can get in contact with me through my website, which is www.motheringthemother.com.au or you can have a look on my Facebook page, or, which, is, which is Mothering the Mother Placenta Encapsulation Service, Melbourne and Adelaide. Um, I can give you my home address, my email address, my phone number. <laughs> No, just that that's fine Tammy you so the the main main point of contact is your website which is motheringthemother.com.au um, yeah. and your, your Facebook page um, and you just touched on that that my next question which was what service areas do you cover and um, from what I heard just then was Melbourne and South Australia yeah that's right I've got I've go Mel, all of Melbourne and I've had a quite a few also from exterior um, outlying areas of Melbourne as well and I also um, have a girl in Adelaide who does um, placenta for me and I've taught her how to do it according to my standards. Okay perfect, perfect. So how much does this all normally cost then Tammy? So this, this procedure is actually $300 for any of the encapsulation services, um, either or, and it's $150 for the homeopathic remedies. But if you get both of them done, it's a, um, $425 if you get an encapsulation and um, a tincture as well. Okay, perfect. And so from that, um, I was talking to you a bit earlier and, and you surprised me um, that you had a special offer for all the viewers. Um, do you want to fill the viewers in or should we keep them in suspense a little bit longer? Oh, it's up to you. What do you reckon? <laughs> well, I think that's definitely keeping them, uh, keeping them in suspense. So, um, yeah, I'll let you lead off with that one, Tammy. Okay, so for um, viewers of the um, New Parenting Hangout, 
and for anyone who visits your new website, I'm going to offer a 20% discount for any placentas that are booked and paid in full up until the um, new financial year, to the end of the financial year. Okay, so that's the 30th of June uh, 2013. Yep. Perfect. That, that's an amazing offer, Tammy. Uh, I don't know how you can do that. I know how much time and effort goes into it and uh, how much that you love, that, love doing this process and I think that you're going to be very busy. Busy. Um, I'm just. I'm really. I'm just really passionate about it, Tom. And I really want. I really want people to be talking about it. I want women to know about it so that they can make a choice. It might. It won't be for everyone, but I just think everyone deserves the to know about it. Okay. Perfect. And does it matter what your due date is, Tammy? Like, can you book in advance? Yeah, you can book in whenever. You can book in when you're two weeks pregnant if you want to. Like, I don't mind. <laughs> Yep, perfect. Okay, so that's a fantastic offer that you've offered there, Tammy. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. There's been some great information um, around placenta encapsulation. Um, I'm pretty excited about the whole the whole thing. You've got me all hyped up. I don't know whether it's the placenta encapsulation or just the vibe that comes off you, Tammy. Um, so thanks for joining us again, Tammy. Um, and yeah, so if anyone wants to find Tammy, they can reach out to her at motheringthemother.com.au. And so I'm Tom from New Parenting Hangout. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys all soon. And just wanted to remind everyone that the website launches in four days' time. Um, check out, go to newparentinghangout.com and check it out if you want, or type in the hashtag in the social media, um, which is NPH Launch. Um, so check that out, it should be good. Anyway, thanks again Tammy, it's been wonderful and I look forward to catching up with you uh, next week and I'll post that up uh, somewhere on, with, on another topic. So, cheers. No worries, thanks Tom. No worries, see you all.